For our FinTech Spotlight segment this month, we are featuring our sponsor, Cube Money, a company focused on digital cash envelope budgeting. I've invited the founder of Cube Money, Ryan Clark, to tell us more about this cash flow planning solution and how it's helping people take control of their money. We're also going to discuss the advantages of cash and debit cards over credit. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Thank you so much, Andy. Excited to be here. Absolutely, man. So let's talk about cash and credit cards. I have gone back and forth a million times with just using cash and the envelopes and debit cards and credit cards, and I've I've had a lot of experience, but I want to know what, what are some of the advantages of using cash over credit cards, in your opinion? You know, cash is really powerful, um, and I think that everyone out there will, will agree that when you part with cash there can be this emotional connection to it. So it, it helps to reinforce any kind of budgeting or, or, or control mechanism that you're looking for. However, I've had I've interviewed a lot of different people uh, with Cube as we've been talking and bringing the system out who have actually said that for them, cash can do the opposite, where if they have cash, they just feel like, oh, it's gone. And, and it doesn't have that. So it's really interesting. And and ultimately, that has led me to realize that the the instrument we're using is not the main thing that has to be in place to really reinforce the, the budgeting controls that we're looking for. There is an, actually a different element. So regardless of payment device, uh, I think most people are on the fan, are on, are on the side of it, it. There's this parting pain, but there are other people that that doesn't it doesn't do it for them. So there's something else that really has to be in there. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, everybody has their own sort of feel, right? Everybody has their. That's why it's called personal finance, right? It's just so, it's just so super personal, right? So let's talk about credit cards because obviously people love their credit cards. Why are people drawn to credit cards so much? It's the rewards, Andy. Everything, all the reports that I see, all the stats. Uh, cards are driven by rewards. Card usage is driven by rewards. People love to get stuff back. What's interesting, though, is that people that use plastic of any kind uh, statistically are also overspending by 17 to 20 percent. So those rewards are expensive, whether you carry a balance or not. That is so interesting. And I, and I believe it. I have done some personal experiments myself where we've gone cash, we've gone credit cards. And even though I say, hey, we're going to spend exactly what we've got in here, well, I know that I spend more uh, with credit cards for sure. So it, yeah, it's just so easy. It is. It, ju it You just swipe, right? Or or now you don't even have to swipe. You just like <laughs> hold it in front of the machine and it goes blip. <laughs> right. <laughs> so brand new systems now. Well, let's talk about ca the cash envelope system because I know that's a, a successful system for a lot of people and it helps them to control their their money. Let's talk about what that is. What is the cash envelope system? Cash envelopes, as far as we can tell, originated back in the depression time. That's when we first start started seeing it uh, see it come out. And I mean, you can see it uh, play out in jars, in piggy banks, you know, any kind of accumulation and isolation of money is very effective because what you're doing is you're creating purpose and isolation for those dollars. Then when you're spending, there's the logistical issue. And this is what we were talking about earlier with, with cash, right? You actually have to part with the money. You have to, so for, for anyone using cash envelopes, when they're at the store, they have to basically answer two questions every single time they want to spend. And the first one is, where's the money coming from? And the second is, do I have enough, right? So they're looking at their spend of what they want to buy. They now go into their purse or wallet, which envelope is this money coming from? And then they have to sit in there and they have to count, do I have enough? Or if they're, if they're really on it, then they're going to have their, their ledger going. But there's all that that has to happen. Now, for most people, that happens in a split second. They look and they go and they're able to spend. Now, if they don't have enough, they're presented with one of the most wonderful, magical opportunities ever in finance. And honestly, I think this is where cash envelopes gets the majority of its power. First, they have to do everything before they make a purchase. But then if they don't have enough in one envelope, they're able to analyze and weigh out their priorities. Is the evening date envelope more important or less important than the shoes I want to buy right now or whatever it is, right? Is the trip to Disneyland less or more important than what I want to do right now? And this is huge. Um, I mean, just, just that, that element alone, first having to do this, having to do it before a purchase and make those two decisions. And then the ability to re-analyze re, um, your plan if you don't have enough funds, right? That right there curb spending. And that that those elements all combined, I think, is why cash envelopes for the last hundred years has been the most effective system at creating real change, not just tracking. There's lots of systems that can track, but real change in spending behaviors that'll be consistent over time. 
Yeah, that makes sense. And that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for behavior change because if it was super easy to do, then everybody would be on budget and rich and all that, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so let's talk about, uh, you, you started to mention some categories. You said shoes and date night. What, what kind of <laughs> envelopes can people have? Let's talk about what people use uh, typically for a cash envelope system. Well, you've got your, your typical six, uh, groceries or food, dining out, gas, clothing, um, Travel is a big one. You know, when we started out doing this, when we were creating digital envelopes, it was interesting because all of a sudden people could do envelopes and they could shop online. And one of the biggest ones we found was an Amazon uh, envelope. But yeah, so those are those are some of the most common. So that's the big beef then probably with the cash envelope system is that you can't really shop online, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can't do hotels. You can't do a car rental. Uh, you can't get a, a plane flight. You can't do Amazon, obviously. So where that is becoming more and more of a, of, of a big thing, if you can't go digital, you, you can't use that system. And so you're now forced to get into the void that is the current banking system where it doesn't have any sort of a philosophy built into it. It's just a void. And anytime you have an empty space, it's always going to get filled with junk. Or I should say it's more apt to get filled with junk and bad ideas and marketing propaganda and all of these things, which is why we're all so susceptible to spend and spend and swipe and go. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, let's talk about where Cube fits into this whole solution then. You got cash envelopes, and then you want to be able to spend digitally. You want to be able to spend online. So talk to me about how Cube solves this problem. So it really goes back. My my background is in financial planning and coaching. And for the last, well, at, at the time, it was 10 years of, of experience with clients, and I would, I would face this same problem over and over again, where I would, I would see their spending behavior. I knew what needed to happen, so I would give them the cash envelope system. And it was fantastic <clears throat> until they wanted to go shop on Amazon or somewhere online. But so we would, I would explain to them how to do it, and many of them would, would go through it. And it was incredible to see the spending change uh, happen so, so consistently. It was amazing. But because it, it wasn't, you, you couldn't use it everywhere. And with the, the quantity of online transactions and subscriptions and everything we have that are happening digitally now, it's just, it, you know, it, it's old school, even though it is extremely effective. And so the, the whole thing came to a head for me. I was working with a couple that was making a quarter million a year. And you would think with a quarter million a year, life's great. But they had made that for about a decade. And they had $30,000 to their name. Now, they had all the nice cars. They had the big house. They had the best seats at all the events but they had no money. And even with a quarter million of finances, the husband and wife are like this frequently. So I put them on the best digital tool I could find at the time. And back then it was the latest and greatest. I was really excited about it. And I said, hey, why don't you guys try this tool? We designed a great plan for them. But because it could be bypassed, about three or four months in, they fell off. So that's another element that I think is really powerful with cash envelopes. It becomes the banking system. It is both the bank and the budget in one that normally we don't get. Normally, people have their bank over here because they have to do something digital, right, with, that works in the system. And they'll have a tracking tool over here that says you only have $500 in, in groceries. But really, you know, you have several thousand dollars. And so it's just so easy to spend the real money and ignore the budget because it's not real. So what Cash Envelopes does is it does, it brings that together. The bank is the budget. The budget is the bank. They're one and the same. Now, we often like to use an analogy for this of a refrigerator filled with junk food. If your fridge is filled with tons of junk food, what are you probably going to eat? Right, right. You're just going to go for it because it's easy. That's how the system works. It's just that's what's there. But then you know how you're going to look if you do eat all that stuff, <laughs> right? So the analogy we like is what if your fridge was filled with compartmentalized vegetables and fruits and just, you know, beautiful and glorious that way, then you're probably going to default to what's there. The system is organized the system is categorized the system is compartmentalized it's just how you're going to eat and it's all healthy when you can make that change it also makes budgeting and living like that very very simple and that's something else we found in in with cash envelopes and then taking this digital we found that when the environment has now shifted and that's just the way banking works within within a week or two people just all of a sudden oh yeah i just i have to I have to go to my app first and I'll select where I'm going to spend from and then I'm swiping and I'm done. It makes the concept of budgeting, it removes it from that four letter word category. You know what I mean? A lot of you, you say budgeting, they're like, ah, but this makes it simple because it's just how it works. That makes sense. So walk me through somebody going to the store and using the card. How does it work? It's exactly the exact same methodology 
uh, and behavior of cash envelopes. So in cash envelopes, you go into the store, you open your wallet or purse, you choose which category, which envelope you're gonna spend from. So there's the, the, the first question, you, you confirm that you have enough, right? You, then you're gonna dip in and now your payment method is your hand grabbing cash and giving it to the person, right? With Cube, with Cube Money, same exact thing, only you're gonna get your phone out. You have to open the app. You select which envelope or cube you're gonna spend from. You simply tap on that one. The money loads up into the card. You hand the card to the person or you just tap your phone if you're going virtual and you pay and you walk out. You don't have to think afterwards, oh, I've got to categorize that or you get the app out and then you know there's no after the fact. All of your planning, all of that happens when you get paid, right? It's that purposeful intentionality when you get paid, when you're not surrounded by the marketing propaganda, you do it when you get paid, ideally calm, logical, and you can do that uh, with your significant other. And then when you're at the store, it's as simple as tap, swipe, and you're done. All with intention. I like it. I like it. So let's say I've got up to the counter and I've got $200 allotted for groceries and I've got $250 worth of groceries there, but I, but I want to get them. Uh, can I steal from other categories? Is that a no-no? How does that work? You absolutely can. Yeah, we made it so that the, 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 the core thing that has to happen with, with envelopes is that you have, to be, you have to use the system. So our card defaults to zero, meaning if you just swipe it, it's going to fail, thus reinforcing the behavior to go to the app first. You have to make a choice. You have to have that in, that intention. You have to spend with purpose. You, you tap the button. But if you don't have enough right there, you have more money in other in other cubes, so you can transfer between cubes. But it's gonna it's gonna make you have to reevaluate your purpose. If you if you if you're spending with a partner, you might think, oh, okay, let's see, date night. Do I want to take from that? Nah, I think she's got something important planned this weekend. Uh, maybe from her clothing cube. Yeah, she doesn't need more clothes. I mean, I can take from that one, right? Or, you know, whatever. But it's going to make you reevaluate and prioritize. Um, and that's powerful. Just having that split moment to think, can I take money from other, other places? Everything's always done on purpose. And so you get to evaluate that instead of spending money in a cloud with no intention. Yeah, the epiphany here for me is it goes from mindless spending to spending with a purpose. I, I, if I remember the commercial correctly, there's a commercial, it's like a Visa commercial where they're all like lining up in a row and they're all just swiping their cards and moving and, and somebody comes up and they've got cash and everybody's really mad at them because they're like counting out their money or something like that. But really, it's the opposite. It's like, slow down for a second, make sure you should buy this or that you actually have money for it and make a... I just might spend with purpose, I guess, is what we're talking about here, right? <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the other features because that sounds a really, really great tool that can help people control their money. I understand that it is available for families too. So what does that mean? What does your family plan mean? And I understand there's kids involved too. So talk to me about that. Yeah, so as we so last year we, we brought out um, our initial concept program, which is called Proactive Budget. And when we, when we did that, the, the intention was just to recreate cash envelopes. But we realized very quickly that people didn't want just cash envelopes. They wanted a full banking suite that had the envelope behavior baked into it. And that's what Cube is. We also realized that there's, there's a social aspect to money. Um, and children, people want to be able to teach cash envelopes and these great financial behaviors to their kids. I've experienced that. My daughter comes home after babysitting or something. She's got a $20 bill. And I'm like, hey, cool, honey, let me teach you what to do with that. Take 10% and put it to, put it to charity. Take 10 or 20% put that to savings. But she has a $20 bill. How on earth do I actually implement those great, wonderful concepts? Right? It's it's too hard because the, the bill isn't divisible unless I want to go drive to the bank and split it up into ones or something. Right? And that's annoying. So I think for most parents, we end up just talking about it and never implementing. So Cube changes that because yes, now you can have the entire family organized into the same exact structure. Parents have the ability to, to see into their kids' cubes, help them build that out, help teach them that, put controls on if you've got a college student, you wanna put some controls like you know no spending off outside of campus, you can do geolocation, you can do restrictions by merchant. So some of those things, you know, maybe no spending at any alcoholic or bar, type of uh, merchant, right? You can do some of those things to create some controls and help your kids or just put some uh, put some rails on how you want your money to go. But ultimately, it socializes everything. One of the coolest features, I think, that uh, we've come up with as we've realized uh, this whole social aspect is uh, what we kind of refer to as Dropbox for money. So imagine your daughter's 16, 
she's coming home from school and you're like, hey, sweetie, could you go by the store and pick up some milk and eggs? And she's like, sure, dad, I'm happy to, but I don't have any money. <laughs> so how do I get her some money? Now, if I'm using Venmo, I could transfer her 20 bucks and then she could make the purchase and then send me the change back. But that's kind of annoying. There's multiple steps. I, what I've seen that happens usually with that is you send the kid 20 bucks, they buy the milk and eggs and you never get the money back, right? So that's that's one way to do it. You could transfer. But what we've come up with here uh, is, is what we call the cube share. And what this does is it allows me to go to my grocery cube and temporarily send my cube to her and now she can spend. So she sees it pop up on her phone. She uses her card. She taps on my cube spends the the uh, the money and maybe i put a limit of 20 bucks only but i can share her that cube she can spend from my money the transaction finishes and then the cube pulls back out of her view and everything's done super simple that is great i i love that system so talk to me about how it works is there a payment processor are you guys the bank how does that work you know, for those that have been following us for the last three years we've been working on this, it has been tricky because we have several dependencies, as do any company in our in our realm. We're dependent on a bank. We're dependent on processes. We're dependent on Visa. And what's wonderful now is because of our success with Proactive and uh, all, the, all the good numbers we were able to pull out of that program, we were able to go to the best in the business. So we just signed a deal with Visa. There's some, there's some information coming out on that uh, here soon. So that's awesome. So they're they're behind us. We've got the best in the business as far as processing. They process for a lot of the big names. I don't know if I can say those here on the show, but they have the, the best in the business. They're fast. They have a rule that they have to process everything in four seconds, which is amazing where we were hitting like 15 and 30 seconds beforehand. It was really awful. So we're super excited to finally bring out the the tech and the partnerships that can that can really drive this home. Excellent. Well, that, that that's good to hear, especially with the backup. So you, you say Visa, so it, it works just like a debit card then probably if there's a fraudulent charge, then you work with Visa. Is that how it works? It's a Visa debit card. So it works just like a debit card. It, it, it is a debit card. Oh, and then I, I didn't mention, then we have a FDIC insured bank backing the whole program as well. So all of the, all of, everything that you would want to be there for a full banking suite, it's there. Excellent. Well, let's talk about some of the nitty gritty. What does this cost me? How, how much is this going to gonna run me? So um, there, there will be a free version. I'll put that out here. So when we release, there will be a free version. It, it's, it's basic, but for a lot of single people, maybe college students, maybe it's just enough. Um, but if you really want to use this with all the pro features, it's just a whopping $8 a month. I know it's steep. Yeah. $8 for the, uh, for the, the, uh, uh, we, we call it the, um, I'm getting confused, the premium. Uh, and then we have a platinum or sorry, a, a family program. And eventually we will have a platinum, but that's down the road. For the... Excellent. And the family <laughs> yeah, program is kind of family. the family's part of what we talked about earlier with the kid and everything like that. Exactly. So okay. you can have up to 10 kids on that. Um, and that one's 15 a month. Excellent. It covers everything. It's a busy family, 10 kids. <laughs> yeah, there are a few like that. In fact, my, my, my co-founder, uh, he's got eight. No so way. Oh, wow. Okay. Know, that maybe maybe that's maybe he made purpose for the system then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, well, Ryan, this has been very informative. Uh, I think that, um, you know, we're talking about the pros and cons of cash versus credit cards. I guess I did have one more question. You know, you, t- you said at the top of the show is that rewards is like this one thing that keeps drawing people back to credit cards. How are you guys going to combat that with either your communication, your marketing, or just the general product that you're bringing to say, hey, this is better than credit cards? The primary draw should be the fact that with with cards, people are overspending. 17 to 20% is, is statistically what it is. And just like you were saying, Andy, if if people will track themselves with cash versus their card, they're going to spend less. They will see that show up. And that savings alone is massive. We see most of our, our, our most of our users with, with Proactive, we're saving $400 within a month or two, just that fast, just from just from spending on purpose. Um, so that that right there, I think, is, is, is the biggest the biggest statement that I can have for that. However, we do have two other systems. One of those will come online later this year. We call it the card sync, where if you do spend with one of your rewards card, our system will get notified. It is after the fact, so it's not before the purchase, but we'll get notified of the purchase. And then you're able to tell the system where it comes from or where that money should be, which cube you want to use to pay that transaction. And then we'll send the payment. So it can make your credit cards kind of turn into debit cards because we're always making the payment, keeping that balance at zero. Um, that system, again, later this year, we call it the card sync. That's great. Okay, so so that yeah. makes a lot of sense. And I, I really like your point on 
um, the the savings because whether whether people sign up for your system or not, Ryan, I would say take a month to try cash envelopes versus credit cards so you can be become a believer. And then obviously, if you love the digital nature of it, it sounds like Cube Money might be the place for you. So congratulations on developing this company. When when can somebody jump on this and, and take advantage of it? We're getting really close, Andy. So um, beta testing should start up here in, um, uh, well, early beta testing was probably going to be late uh, April. And then May, we'll, be, we'll get into the, the core of the beta testing. We did decide that we're going to extend that a little longer. Um, and then we're probably looking at summer, early to mid summer for the full release. So if you want to get in, go to our website, uh, sign up, you can get on as a, as a beta tester and, uh, and, and start sooner than later, or you can wait for the full release here this summer and get, uh, start spending with purpose. Excellent. Well, Ryan, tell us what that website is so people know where to go. Cubemoney.com. Perfect. Nice and easy. Excellent. Ryan, thank you so much for your time today and congratulations on this launch. Thank you, Andy. 